Welcome back to Posting Offerings to Jewel. If you'll remember, in Part 1, we talked about the list of preset accounts that are on the contribution entry screen. We're going to start this Part 2 by looking at where you can edit that list. Go to Maintenance and Properties and Accounts. At the bottom of this account window, we'll see the, you will see the default account order for contributions. If you want to delete, you would highlight and select the delete button. If you wanted to add more, you could insert. We want to do neither one right now, but I did want you to know where this could be done. Once you have made changes, you need to say OK. Since Part 1, I have posted the second and the third Sabbath offerings for the month of January. I'm in the midst of posting the last Sabbath of January, January 25, 2014. When you stop in the middle of an offering, which you can do, let's say you have to go pick the kids up from school, you get a phone call. Um, you have to go to work. It's okay to stop in the middle of posting an offering. When that happens, you'll notice that in the next step, instead of saying start new offering, it now says enter contributions. When you see the next step as enter contributions, look to the lower right hand screen. There you will see which Sabbath you were posting, in this case January 25, and how many envelopes have been entered so far. We're going to select the next step of enter contributions. It here shows us the last offering envelope that was posted. It was the church loose offering. Do you notice here the little dots that are around this, the, the outside perimeter of this button, new envelope? The little dots indicate what function will take place if I hit enter on my keyboard. I can, of course, of course, point with my cursor, with my mouse, at that new envelope and left click. I could also hit the F8 key at any time. But when you come back mid-offering and the dots are around that, I can merely enter, hit the Enter key and it takes me to the next donor. It will always bring up the next alphabetical listing for a donor. I don't want donor number two. I actually see that the next thing that needs to be posted is Lamb's Offering. Lamb's Offering, as soon as I get LA, it brings up the whole name. I hit Enter. Lamb's Offering, of course, is cash because if there were any checks, I would make out a tithe envelope for those so the donor gets credit for his, don his or her donation. I hit enter, there are no checks. It goes down to tithe, now I know what my default list is. Lamb's Offering, in this case, is going to be posted to the Children's Ministries. I do not have a Children's Ministry as a default, so I can overwrite. When a, a field is blue, that means I don't need to left click on it. If it's blue and I type, it will type over everything in the blue. So I'm going to type children's, CHI brought up children's ministries. I hit enter on my keyboard and the amount is of course $123. The next is a donor envelope for the Equinox family. I hit enter. They have given $25 in cash and they also wrote a check for $25. The check number is 358 for that $25. I hit enter and there is tithe for the entire amount, $50. And the last envelope is for Sabbath School Loose Offering. Sabbath School Loose Offering, again, is all cash. And I 
know that Sabbath school missions is $13, Sabbath school expense is $14. Notice one donor Sabbath school loose offering and yet a split of two accounts. When I hit enter, it goes to a new envelope and I'm puzzled because I have no other tithe envelopes to post. If this happens to you, go to trial deposit. In trial deposit, we can see that the offering total is $1,387.93. The envelope total is $1,387. And I go, uh-oh, I've messed up. The easiest place to find that, I can look here, but it doesn't give me breakdown, so I can check and see, or I can print or select trial contribution report. As I skim down through here, I see immediately that what I missed, misposted, was church loose offering. I select church loose offering. Notice when my cursor is over to the right, it's an arrow. As soon as it enters, the area of the contribution report, it becomes a magnifying glass. I can hover over any part of this donation, Church Loose Offering, which I've misposted, and left click, and it will take me to that contribution entry screen. If I see where my mistake is, I will edit envelope. Now the mistake could be that I misposted the offering total. In this case, I actually misposted church loose offering and the deposit amount was correct. So I'm going to select Edit Envelope. I want to first edit the total cash given. It was $112.93. And down here, I want to post the allocation of that offering as well. $112.93. Now I go back to trial deposit and it has not processed that change. So I will select church loose offering. I'm going to try again trial deposit and it's finally posted it. Once I have a zero difference here, I go to make deposit and I can select OK. Notice that er the message that pops up here is the current deposit for January 25, the last offering for January. This is always going to be the question that's asked when you post the offering for the last Sabbath of the month. If you know that there are no further offerings for that month to be posted, you would say yes, that is the last offering of the month. If you know that you have Adventist Online Giving, which will be coming and you won't know till the last day of the month has passed, so Adventist Online Giving, you can pull that report on the first, second, or very latest by the third, you can get that report. Adventist Online Giving should always be posted in the month that it was actually donated, not in the month that the deposit is made to your bank. So Adventist Online Giving for January would be posted in January, even though the deposit doesn't reach your bank until February 6 or 7. In this case, I'm going to say yes. That is the last offering of the month. Notice how the next step now changes to remit to conference. I'm going to pause here and point out that if you have erroneously said yes that's the last offering of the month and then you remember wait there was another offering that came in where it whether it's Adventist online giving or whether it was an offering for Wednesday night prayer meeting please note that you do not want to post anything that's non offering through the contribution system you want to post it by journal entry, and we'll talk about that at another time. But if you have mistakenly said that's not the last offering, um, that is the last offering, go up here to Offerings, and you can select Start New Offering. It's going to say you should only answer yes if you need to enter another offering for January. The last offering you entered is January 25. I'm saying yes, I need to add Adventist Online Giving. 
Notice that the date will go to the next month because it always jumps Sabbath to Sabbath. But you can overwrite this Adventist Online Giving. You would overwrite with 013114. Please note that you can put dates in with no dashes and no slashes. It's a six digit um, date format. And when I hit enter, it puts the slashes in for me. Then I would put in the offering total. I'm going to put in zero because in this case, I actually don't have another one. You've not entered an offering total. That's actually another issue, but I can now select cancel this offering. Yes, I want to cancel it. Now, how do I get back to remit to conference? I go again to offerings and say no more offerings this month and say yes, I've entered that last. And now it takes me to remit to conference. Please notice that the remit is already calculate, calculated for you. You can trust Jewel to calculate this correctly. It gives total tithe and total conference funds the default here. The only thing you need to make sure that you edit, and I'm going to select Edit Check, verify that this is the correct check number. This is only an issue if your handwriting checks and forgot to skip a check to, at the end of the month and you went ahead and wrote checks in the new month and now you're back and oh, you have to write the remittance check. Make sure that this is the correct check number and note that this date, I want it to be, it's going to default to today's date, which now you know I'm doing this recording when I'm doing the recording. The default, what you want to put in is 013114, which is the actual last day of the month that relates to this remittance month down here. Once you have the correct numbers, then you say OK. You do not need to check this. This is not correct because I handwrite checks. And so I uncheck this, print this check, and then I can say OK one more time. You've not selected any checks to print, and that's OK, because I actually don't need to print. Um, I'm not going to print it. Are you ready to send your remittance report to the conference? You want to say yes. It is done electronically, and immediately it's sent. You are then taken to budget allocations, and we're going to actually cancel that because that's the end of this tutorial video.